G'day viewers, we're here in Philadelphia and we're going to drive the Pennsylvanian. We're getting hauled by a GG1. I'm train simulator driver from down under. Let's get this big beast underway. So we need some uh, lights in here so we can see what's going on. Uh, headlights, actually already did that. We don't need a bell. We've got signals. We've got no power happening. This is good. Let's get the brakes off. Get that massive horn going. Get her into forwards and let's get some power happening. I'll just pop on the little HUD. Let's go and watch it emerge from outside here as we come out into the snowy route. Now the GG1 is not part of the New York Philadelphia route. But it is running on the route that's on sale in the Dovetail Publisher event, which is on right now. As we gradually head out here, North Philadelphia. Sorry, Philadelphia. And we're heading to North Philadelphia. Now, I have actually done this ride on a train. I was a funny story, actually. I was booked onto an Acela class to ride this. Looking forward to it, thinking good high speed running. You know what we got? Turns out the Acela was broken. And we ended up with some clapped out New Jersey Transit thing hauling a rake of pretty old Amtrak coaches. They weren't heavyweights, but they weren't exactly new either. Now, why am I running the GG1? Because it's got a really cool horn, that's why. Wouldn't you? So this run goes for about an hour and a half. So you'll be watching a condensed version on the video. Just fix my headlight up there. There we go. As we cruise out on this lovely sunny day in Philadelphia, anybody think it was winter or something? And I'll try and behave myself and watch my speed, but ah, no promises. The last people who saw me stream one of these things know that it didn't exactly end well. You see, I had this idea that the GG1 could probably make the Acela timetable. And I think it probably could, because it, it seems to top out at about 120 mile an hour, which isn't that far off the 125 mark that you would need to average to make that timetable. But let's just say some points at Trenton and I were not on friendly terms. We all ended up upside down. Waving its little wheels in the air in surrender. They were still turning though, which was kind of funny. Because it had no power anymore. But it was still going. But that's okay. We're on our way to North Philadelphia. Now if you check out the reviews of this locomotive, it'll tell you things like... The headlights don't work. Uh-huh. Uh, it's pretty lit up to me. It'll tell you things like you can't drop the pantograph. Yes, you can. Should we do that when we're driving? Ah, oh, why not? It's that one, I think. Plonk. Pantograph down. Pantograph up. Looks like it works to me. Oh, well. Now, they do comment on the tiny little viewport you get, but, you know, it's just not that unusual on a train. Now, this thing, remember, is 1920s, 30s, somewhere around that vintage. So, expect the same visibility as a steam train, and that's pretty much what you get. Gratuitous bridge shut. Must do it. Oh, there's two bridges. One's in the way. 
go forward a bit. There we go. Sounds like a cruise ship on a foggy day. Well, the fog's here. Just no ship. No ship, it's a train. Time for some more speed. Now it's a pretty old model, but it's got some cool things for its time. Including telling me I'm speeding all the time. But it's got in-cab signalling. Some of the more modern stuff doesn't have in-cab signalling, so it's pretty cool. You've got controls for your windscreen wipers, you've got the horn. Your visor can go down and up. You can open the window. Now, what you don't have, the open window is actually here. You don't have the ability to, to look left to your, uh, your co-worker. So if we go outside the train and go around this side, you can quite plainly see there is a person in there and you can see yourself on the other side. So you should be able to turn to your left and see yourself but unfortunately, you can't. Doesn't that logo look familiar? The Pennsylvania Railroad. Doesn't it remind you of something? Oh yeah, the Long Island Railroad. Guess where they came from. I shouldn't really be speeding up now. We're almost at North Philadelphia. It's got some get up and go. I'll give it that. Now, at North Philadelphia, I'll have to stop with my locomotives out of the platform. Because it just doesn't fit. Now we're on the uh, express track here, so do we run to the outside track to North Philadelphia? That's possible. Perhaps I should start slowing down a little bit just in case. There's a happy looking man. G'day, man. bit old on the modelling in there. There isn't, actually isn't a passenger view on this one, unfortunately. It's a bit too old for that. No, it looks like we're staying on this track. I can see a platform up there. Now, this route comes with some more modern hardware. In the realms of some Amtrak equipment. I think we are changing tracks because that train's in front of us. And if we're not changing tracks, we're crashing into it. Ah, there we go. Oh yes, that's right. It's time for a drag race coming out of North Philly. I forgot about this in this scenario. We should make some good camera angles. He's a stopper and we're an express. After this, I think we only stop at Trenton and then... Uh, the pen in New, York, New Jersey and then New York pen, I think, from memory. So if I get on with it and get into this station in time, we can have a bit of a hoon fest. As you do. Just checking the uh, signal up ahead is, in fact, appropriately clear for us, so it's fine that my locomotives are going to be sticking out a bit. Let's get a lot of brakes on. Because not all of our train actually fits in the platform. So we've got to hang out a little. There we go. That'll do. And good -o. Let's go back and have a look at our passengers. Is the other GG1 sitting over here? I swear it's a little dark, but you know, it's winter. We cruise along down our train, down the platform here, at North Philadelphia. Let's see how much of the train I actually got in. I think there's still probably be a couple of cars sticking out the back, even with that much out the front. Because it's a very long train. Ooh, look out, the guards getting ready to go over there. Now oh, we've got one car out the back. That's okay. All right, let's jump back into the front. 
because what I want to do is I want to keep an eye on our friend over there. Let's get the brakes off. I'm just waiting for our mate on the next track to take off as well so we can do a little bit of parallel running. He shouldn't be too long. Honest. Come on, mate. What are you doing? Looks like old mate's ready to go over there. He's uh, cranked up his headlight. I've got my brakes off, so why don't we start to leave as well? Bit of parallel running from the two cruise liners. I was inside his train then. He's beating us. I've chucked all the kittens in the box now. The drag race is on. not trying very hard. Ah oh well, we're just going to get on with the run. Nice knowing you mate. See you later. Have fun with your stopping all stations. Nice tight curve here. Now for such an old route it actually is fairly scenic. And I believe it's 80% off. Now you might assume that I get all my DLC for Dovetail for free, but I don't. And I have to say that I did actually buy this one specifically to run the GG1 because, I don't know, someone mentioned it and I thought, that sounds like fun. And I paid the normal price. Oh well. Just going to start slowing down for this... Uh rather tight set of curves up here. You can actually get through them at about 75 or so, but we shall behave ourselves and op operate with uh, professionalism and decorum. If you haven't met me before, I stream every Sunday morning with the latest and greatest and a selection of older content. I concentrate mostly on trains. And it's Sunday morning, Australian Eastern Daylight Time, 8.30am. As we go around the tight curve. Get your ticket today, says the sign. Ah, Paul. Just that one. Go much better now. Oh. Anyway, that's uh, eight thirty a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. In fact, I should should not uh, forget that. Which equates to sometime in the evening for those of you in the UK and the US who live in my past. 
That's right, I live in your future. All Aussies do. But don't worry, New Zealanders live in front of us. So if you ever need the lotto numbers or something, just uh, send me a DM. Happy to share. We can all get rich. The nice detail down there of some smashed up rail cars. It's another googie. Get back onto full fang. On our way to Trenton, New Jersey. So we travel through three states today. And this is an important part of the Northeast Corridor. And you can certainly tell it's an American route. Very patriotic. Large flags smattered all over the place, which is pretty much my experience of America. I did live there for four years, and I have visited, well, let's just say in all the non-COVID years since then. Except this one. Haven't quite got back into the international travel yet. Does still slightly bother me that uh, I might go somewhere and not be able to come home for a while. This is a massive freeway. If you rode the train, you'd be home by now. Delightful little station there. I think he might have been a little bit mad that I was on the tracks. We fly through Holmesburg. On our way to Trenton in only 19 miles. Another GG1 hauling a rake of tank cars with a pretty little caboose on the back. I am driving this with rail driver today. really adds to the immersive experience of driving in the various simulators to have a, a controller that's got controls similar to a real train. They are a little on the pricey side, but uh, I got mine in 2001 to play with MSTS and it's still going strong. I can't think of any other computer peripheral that I've got that has actually lasted this long. So I'm quietly impressed.
You only get one horn on this beast, you always have to blow the long one. It is a bit of a Spartan cab, I have to admit, but it's got everything you need. It's got the gauges. Power gauges are the uh, three yellow ones here. We've got our in-cab signalling down here, which means we don't even have to look out the window. Speedometer, various switch controls. We've got all the gauges for our brakes down below. The main ones that you need are the brake pipe, which is the white needle, and the brake cylinder, which is the red needle. You can pretty much ignore the other ones, but they do do stuff. Another 10 miles to Trenton. Kind of makes you wish this was later at night. It's only 5.30. This would be a commuter special. Imagine commuting from Philadelphia to New York every day, but I'm sure people do it. Bit of bump and grind going on in this corner. Wonder if it's really a 110 corner. It doesn't feel like it. Feels a little rough. Pretty busy little route, this one, the uh, Northeast Corridor, New York to Philadelphia. Large amount of water over there, and a small amount of water over there. Wow, imagine living in that housing estate. You come home drunk one day and you go, Honey, I'm home. And she goes, Who are you? Because you're in the wrong house. Oh, I think it might be time to put the kittens back in the cage for a little while. Start slowing this beastie down for our stop in Trenton. Green on the stick up there, reflected in here nicely. Being part of the TS Classic range, the uh, GG1, while it's not on sale, um, for me I think it was about 12 Australian dollars, so whatever that equates to in your Steam Normal, who knows, but... Uh, Have a look. It's a fun one in my book. Two miles out from Trenton. Conducted back there would be making the announcements about now that we are approaching Trenton. And that people should, if they're leaving the train, could get their things together and take them off. That didn't sound right. They should get to get their things together and take them with them when they get off the train. That's better. Wake up the people here. 
And let's start getting some serious speed off as we come into Trenton. Now looking on the old brake pipe down there. Very good. Whoop, let me see a bridge. Bridge, 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 bridge. Welcome to Trenton. Slowly crawling our way into Trenton here. Signal tells me that we're diverting onto another track. Selected there. Not sure how long the platform is at Trenton. After all, last time I came here, it was about now that I ended up upside down. It's amazing what a difference behaving yourself makes. It really is. One of my locomotives ended up on that platform. And the other one was inside the building with part of it sticking out. It's kind of funny. Not appropriate, but funny. We do have a an okay signal coming out of here by the looks. That is my signal up there, isn't it? I think. Because I want to stop with my locomotives out of the platform. Just so the back of my train actually fits. Not going to go through it anyway. All good. Whoops, I pulled a carriage out of the front of the platform. It's at, uh, <clears throat> yes. T and Bicky's with the manager later. Hop down here on Trenton. Of course, everybody drives a truck. Call those utes in Australia. How did the back of the train go? It's rather a long stop here at Trenton. Now I'm driving Train Simulator Classic where people just vanish. The difference between the uh, two main simulators, Train Simulator Classic and Train Sim World, apart from falling through platforms, in Train Simulator Classic, you are the train is probably the best way to describe it. This is an awfully long stop. I think I might cut most of this out. But uh, in Train Sim World, you are the driver. You drive the machine. Breaks off and away we go. You've got to be a little bit gentle with these powerhouses because uh, you can get some amazing wheel slip if you go a little hard. Police car was just abducted by aliens. A 
mixed. Could have sworn I was in a 45 zone, officer. Away we go to New Brunswick in 24 miles. Have a quick look at the map. Center us and uh, zoom out a bit. So we've come along. Can't actually zoom out anymore, but I think we've come along about a third of the route. Oops. Uh, being naughty again. Another train coming the other way here. Nice hat, fella. Another pretty good sized freight. With another cute little caboose on the tail end. Alright, here we go. Powering up. Full power. See what that looks like on the uh, graphs here on our left. We have pegged it up the top. Train's just about pegged at 100. But we're going to keep going. Why? Because we can. Imagine being on the platform when that came past. It's another one. A seriously busy little scenario, really. Quite enjoying it. When I try and make scenarios this busy, we get the dreaded out of memory. The amps are dropping off quite steadily. Not using that much power anymore. We've pretty much reached our cruising velocity of 120. It can get a little over 120, but not a lot. We'll use this trip to New Brunswick to see if we can get much over it at all. We're using an amazing amount of power to stay at this speed though. 1100 amps. Cruising through Princeton Junction. I can only guess, but I'm guessing the university? Where is it? Still making our way towards New Brunswick in 15 miles. 
It's amazing how quickly the miles get chewed up at this sort of speed. All greens for the high ball. The origins of the high ball is from one of the original signaling systems where they did literally have a ball on a rope and they'd lift it up to the top of a pole and that was high ball and that meant you could go through. If there were train orders waiting for you there you had to stop and that was low ball. I think only high ball survived into the uh, current railway vernacular. Large industry over there. Some mills of some kind. And big silos. Only eight miles to New Brunswick now. I think this would be quite an interesting route to drive. Because while it's got a bit of straight and some really long runs, the scenery is quite nice, as I remember it from my trip. We're only about a bit under three miles out now from uh, New Brunswick, so I've been letting gravity do its thing and cut the power off a little while ago. I clearly was not watching the cab signals. Oof. That was rough. Sorry for your coffee, ladies and gents. Was so busy cruising along, enjoying the run, didn't even think to look at the cab signals, and bang, line change. Fortunately, I had already slowed down enough that we uh, survived the experience the correct way up. what that house keeps in its massive silo back there. The doctor will be letting the passengers know that we are now arriving in New Brunswick.
guessing we'll be here for a while since I'm seven minutes early. Overshoot. Bad train simulator driver. Good oh. This is a convenient place to have a break. Perhaps we should uh, hop over to the sunken diner here. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting something like Star Wars and Moss Eisley. Damn it, it's shut. Oh well. Better get back to the cab. It's almost time to get out of here. Let's start our brakes releasing. nicely you can see the uh, white metal here the brake pipe is charging back up as they equalize we should see the uh, red needle start to release there we go brakes are starting to come off now very good next stop is Newark Penn Station Could be, I think, our last stop in New Jersey. Again, and see what my signals say. Green, so we can go full track speed. Oops, bit too many kittens in the box. Bridge up. Screenshot worthy. Is that now we can go full fang unleash the terrifying power of the kittens Eighty mile an hour corner coming up. If you just joined us, we are driving along the Northeast Corridor from Philadelphia to New York. The route's on sale currently at 80% off. I'm driving a non-native to the route, which is the GG1.
G'day viewers, we're only five miles out from Newark Pen now. Welcome back. I cut out a uh, bit of a long run there. They have flashing yellows on the uh, signals there. Now got a green in the cab, so we can uh, start to pick up some speed again. Blasting through another little wayside stop. Indeed, green on the signal up above. Don't want to build up too much speed because we've got a uh, 70 marker coming up. I'm going to be going over an interesting hump up here. Interesting that the main line takes the route over the hump to clear what is uh, likely to be a freight line going into the branch there. Two miles to Newark Pen. Just left it letting her drift in at this point. Ten mile an hour. What the? Ten. Look, that's my cab signal. It's green. What's going on there? Oh, and now we're 70. Good idea. Oh, I think we just experienced what's known in the business as a bug. We have to put a little bit of power on now. We're not going to make it into Newark Penn Station. See the big iconic lift bridge in the distance there. In 2020, I think, if I'm remembering rightly. No? 2019. In 2019, I stayed in Newark. 
for a couple of weeks, making a daily commute off into New York. Might sound like a strange thing to do, but in Newark I was able to stay in a uh, quite nice four-star hotel. For the price of a youth hostel in uh, Manhattan. That was one of those buildings up there on the left. Rolling our way in. The curved platforms at Newark Penn are a little bit of a novelty. I wonder if they catch many drivers out. Kill the wiper now because we're undercover. I shall not be sailing through this platform. The signal does look just a little bit too red to allow that. Outside the station. Let's head in. Get our doors open. Well, apparently that'll be the end of our run. Because the Pennsylvanian, this is Dock Tower. We are currently experiencing a power failure in the Hudson area affecting trains into New York Penn. Hold here until further notice. There you go. We don't get to finish our run. Woo. Oh well. This has been Train Simulator Driver from Down Under. You can catch me on YouTube. Just search the name Train Simulator Driver. Alrighty. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have fun. Grab some stuff in the sale from the uh, Publisher Weekend. And enjoy yourselves. See you later.